we're going to write a program that calculates the value of small factorials. Uh, a factorial for a value like n, uh, which would be like a natural number or a whole number, um, you multiply all the numbers from 1 up until that number. So for example, 5 factorial is 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5, which is 120. Um, so we're going to do that with a graphical user interface right here. So I'm going to throw in a few pieces, a, a label as a prompt. Uh, let's put in a text field for the user to put a value in. And we'll need a button to say go. And last, we're going to need a label to print out the result. Uh, let's just resize some things here. And we'll make everything really big. Okay, so the first label here is our prompt label, so uh, enter a whole number below. And then in this text field, I don't really need anything yet. Factorialize it, and in this label, I'm going to just put no value yet clear that that hasn't been done yet, and I'm going to just change the alignment to center it. So there's our user interface. Uh, everything's going to happen when we press this button. So event action performed is the uh, is the kind of uh, action. Oh, let me just go back. I didn't rename my uh, areas here. So this is a, a prompt label. I want to rename these components so they have better, better names, more descriptive names. There's the input field. This is the factorial button, and I don't think factorialize is a word if you're curious, and this is the uh, result label. Okay, now let's head back over to our, our source code and uh, look at, you can see that the factorial button action performed method has been renamed to match the button label that I just changed, the, the name of the button. So the first thing we want to do is uh, get that integer or, or um, whole number out of that text field. So I'm going to do that in a try block, try, uh, and then I'm going to put a catch underneath it. And this is because you may get a number uh, format exception uh, if it's a, not a nicely formed integer. Uh, so if that happens, I'm not. I don't want to system it out. I'm going to use that result label so that somebody using the interface can see it. Result label dot set text to uh, that's not a whole number. Okay, and let's start our try block then. So first we need to grab that integer. So int uh, I'm going to call it just n for that like that n factorial is the input field and I want to uh, get its text and now what I'm going to do with that is stick that inside of an integer method integer.parseInt and I'm going to give it that string value there. I'm going to do one more thing now as the, I might get an integer but I might get something that's not a useful integer like a negative 5 and so I'm going to do a little if here if n is less than 0, I want to throw a number format exception. I think I have to put a new in there. And I think that's all I need to do for that. We're going to see if that works or not, just like that. Um, because the, the, it's not that it's not an integer, but I'm saying that I have to have a, a good uh, number that's greater than 0, or greater than that is at least zero, and so I can make my own number format exception, which will take me to the catch block and finish off this uh, this method. So now we're going to start our for loop. Uh, so we need something to accumulate our values into. Um, so and as I'm thinking about this, I think an int is probably the wrong move. Let's go with a long because uh, long values can be much larger. I'm just going to change int to long everywhere. And that's better. Okay, so another long, and this will this will accumulate the value for us. And I'm going to just call this the factorial. And I'm going to start it at one. 
Uh, so if we have a 0 factorial, it's going to be 1. And uh, 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6, and so on. And now we're going to use our for loop. And we're going to need some kind of a counter. Uh, which is going to start at 1 in our case. I need to declare its type. And as long as that value is less than or equal to n, then we're going to run through the loop and each time we're going to uh, increment the count by 1. That's what our plus plus operator does. And so each time through this we are going to uh, say that the factorial equals the factorial times, that's the asterisk, uh, the count. So let's think about this just for a second. If our value was uh, 3, then we would start off with count being 1 and factorial is 1. Uh, the count would be less than 3, which is fine. We would multiply by 1, which kind of doesn't do anything the first time around. It would be incremented to 2. Then we would have 2, which is less than 3, we would multiply by 2. The third time through, um, 3 would be equal to 3, so this would be our last time through the loop. Multiply by 3, 2 times 3 is going to be 6, and we're going to be finished. So that works out pretty well. At the end, we want result label dot set text to say that, um, th you know, 3 factorial or whatever it is, so n plus an exclamation point is the operator. Uh, so say 3 factorial, n factorial is, and then put in our accumulated value, which is the factorial variable. All right, let's uh, run this and see how it goes. Oh, I have an error. Let's see what it is. Oh, sorry, I used the, uh, the wrong class. I want the long class instead of the integer class. Let's try that again. Alright, we have something now. We used 5 as an example before. Hey, 5 factorial is 120. That's good. Let's try 1 factorial is 1. Uh, 8 factorial should be, that looks good, 40,320. Let's try 0. 0 factorial is 1. Let's try negative 1. That's not a whole number. Good. Let's try Bob. Also not a whole number. And let's try something bigger. 13. Uh, our numbers are getting big and we're about to run into a problem. That number's pretty good, but what happens when I do 25 or 30? Uh-oh, you see this negative value here. There's a limit to the number of digits you can have in a long um, integer like this. And so when you get up to these kinds of numbers, it sort of loops around. If you get past, I forget exactly the value, but if you get past the 2 to the 32 or something like that, it loops around and gives, starts giving you negative numbers again uh, instead of the positive ones that you were starting with. So there's a limit to how high you can get here and if instead of doing that you can use something like the big integer class that Java provides to um, do the same calculations but using more complex objects. So let's take a look then at what we've done. We used a try catch block because we weren't sure that the user was going to give us a good value. We used um, long integer values uh, so that we can get big factorial numbers. Um, if the user gave us something that was a number but not the kind of number we wanted, we threw our own number format exception, which was new. And then our loop was a for loop. We declared our counter. We checked that our counter was less than our n value, and uh, we incremented it each time, less than or equal to our n value. Each time through the loop, we multiplied our factorial by our count. I suppose if I were to do this again, I could have used integers for um, n, and for the count, and just the factorial itself had to be a long value. That's the only thing that's going to get really big as we go along. As you saw, we can't get up to even 30 with this n number, so we're keeping pretty small numbers for n and for our counter. Uh, so that's it, and uh, I hope that was uh, informative, and I'll see you next time.